today we're going to discuss compound radius fretboards and if they're right for you. So first of all, what is a compound radius fretboard? Basically, the fretboard goes from one radius to another through the neck. But what is fretboard radius? So all these fretboards on guitars are curved, unless they're not, unless they're flat. But all these fretboards are curved and the curve is according to a circle and the circle is according to a radius if you recall and this radius defines how much the circle curves so the bigger the number the radius the flatter the curve if you have a nine and a half inch radius you're going to have a neck that's more curved but if you have a 21 inch radius the neck is going to feel more flat so why compound radius? You know, there's more expense in making a more complicated guitar. Why would they do this? Well, there's two reasons. They say a rounder radius is better for cording and a flatter radius is better for leads and bends. That's what they say. So then they put the rounder radius down here and they put the flatter radius up here. They also say online that because of geometry, you know, it would make more sense to have a rounder radius down here and a flatter radius up here because the strings flare out. You know, the necks get wider as you go down the neck. So that's what they say, but let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about if this is right for you and how this feels. So how do you know if this is right for you? Well, first of all, because it's a compound radius and the radius is changing, you can basically go to like a guitar center or something and you could try a guitar with a rounder radius, like a Stratocaster, with like a nine and a half inch radius or like a Gibson with a 12 inch radius, you know, something that's more round. And you can play like down here on the lower frets and you can pick up like an Ibanez or an ESP or an LTD that has like a larger radius and you can play up here and see if that feels good too. And so you can find out if a compound radius is good for you because you like the rounder radius on the lower frets and you like the flatter radius on the upper frets. And if this was a good playing experience, then a compound radius is for you. However, if you preferred a more flat radius throughout the frets, or if you preferred a more round radius throughout the frets, then a compound radius is not for you. You know, they say that if you prefer bends on the higher frets, like if you're only playing bends and stuff up here, but if you're not bending and you're just like doing chords and stuff down here, then maybe a compound radius is for you. You know, personally, I prefer a uniform radius. So I prefer a more flat radius just for the stuff I do. You know, I like doing bends and stuff, slides, all that stuff. And I do do chords sometimes like bar chords. I don't really do open chords too much just for some context. So if you're just doing more like power chords, things like that, you know, maybe you don't need a compound radius, maybe just a uniform radius of whatever you prefer will work for you. But if you're being more like dynamic, like you have to do like bends up here and you have to do more like open chords down here and you have to do like a wide variety of things, you know, maybe a compound radius will work. Like I think this guitar has like a 10 to 14, if I remember correctly, and this can pretty much do everything. And if I remember, this is a 16 to 21 inch radius. And this can do a lot of things too, but like 16 inches is already pretty flat. So this is definitely more like a modern kind of guitar. So definitely don't make your decision based off of if it's a compound radius or not. Like definitely look at the numbers too. Like in my personal opinion, like anything like 12 inches and below, maybe that's like feeling more round and then above 12 inches, that's gonna start to feel more like flat. So like look at the fretboard radius, but also the neck profile too and the thickness and all that too. Like if it's round, if it's thick, etc. I prefer a uniform neck radius radius but that's just because I don't particularly personally like change whenever I'm playing up and down the fretboard up and down the neck and I do also want to add the caveat to like on the guitars I do have that have compound radii it's not a deal breaker like it's not the end of the world like if I had to choose between like here's a uniform radius guitar and here's a compound radius guitar like which one would I pick it wouldn't really matter too much to me. Like it's just a little bit of adjustment, but also when you're playing like a live show, when you've got the adrenaline going or when you're like recording and you've also got the adrenaline going, 
That little difference can mean a lot. If you're used to the flat radius and bending up high, and then suddenly you go down low and it's more round and you're missing all the notes, that could be a factor. At the same time, maybe not. It really depends personally on what you prefer. So overall, in the discussion of compound radii, is it a selling feature? Is it extremely important? To me, it's not. But the thing is, these guitars, they're tools for our trade. You know, we're making music, and if that's really important to you, you know, good for you. You know, it's not personally important to me, but if it makes the difference for you and you can make the song you've always dreamed of, that's great. So overall, contributing to this discussion, the compound radius lets you have a rounder radius down lower on the neck and a flatter radius up high. So if you like playing rounder radii guitars, like a more vintage Strat or something like that down low, and you like playing a more modern guitar up high, like an Ibanez, or an LTD, then a compound radius is for you. But if you need something more consistent, more uniform, then a compound radius might not work. But in my personal opinion, it's not a deal breaker whether a guitar has a compound radius or not. So I hope this helps. I hope this answers your questions. You know, there's a lot of marketing online. They say, oh, here's this, here's that. You want this, you want that. At the end of the day, these feel like guitars. There are slight differences that aren't gonna matter too much. I'm not sponsored. I'm not paid money to do this. I'm just a guy on the internet who likes guitars. I'm not a virtuoso. I'm not in any amazing band who's touring or anything like that. I do just the casual online thing. You know, I make my own songs. I post them online, etc. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. And if you think it was helpful, you know, do all the YouTube things. This is YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. I have to tell you to share the video, print out every frame and mail it, all that good stuff. And peace.